Hello everyone welcome my YouTube channel. Breaking news. Vladimir Putin says Russia won't use nuclear weapons in Ukraine Mr. Putin said an earlier warning of his readiness to use all means available to protect Russia did not amount to nuclear saber rattling Russian President Vladimir Putin has denied having any intentions of using nuclear weapons in Ukraine but described the conflict there as part of alleged efforts by the West to secure its global domination, which he insisted are doomed to fail. Speaking at a conference of international foreign policy experts, Mr. Putin said it was pointless for Russia to strike Ukraine with nuclear weapons. We see no need for that, Mr. Putin said. There is no point in that, neither political, nor military. Mr. Putin said an earlier warning of his readiness to use all means available to protect Russia did not amount to nuclear saber rattling but was merely a response to Western statements about their possible use of nuclear weapons. He particularly mentioned Liz Truss saying in August that she would be ready to use nuclear weapons if she became Britain's prime minister, a remark which he said worried the Kremlin. What were we supposed to think? Mr. Putin said. We saw that as a coordinated position, an attempt to blackmail us. In a long speech full of diatribes against the United States and its allies, Mr. Putin accused them of trying to dictate their terms to other nations in a dangerous, bloody and dirty domination game. Mr. Putin, who sent his troops into Ukraine on February 24, has cast Western support for Ukraine as part of broad efforts by Washington and its allies to enforce its will upon others through a rules-based world order. He argued that the world has reached a turning point, when the West is no longer able to dictate its will to humankind but still tries to do it, and the majority of nations no longer want to tolerate it. The Russian leader claimed that the Western policies will foment more chaos, adding that, he who sows the wind will reap the whirlwind. Mr. Putin claimed that, humankind now faces a choice. Accumulate a load of problems that will inevitably crush us all or try to find solutions that may not be ideal but could work and could make the world more stable and secure. Without offering evidence, the Russian leader repeated Moscow's unproven allegation that Ukraine was plotting a false flag attack involving a radioactive dirty bomb it would try to pin on Russia. Ukraine has strongly rejected the claim, and its Western allies have dismissed it as transparently false. Ukraine argued Russia might be making the unfounded allegation to serve as a cover for its own possible plot to detonate a dirty bomb. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin told reporters on Thursday that the U.S. has still not seen anything to indicate that Mr. Putin has decided to use a dirty bomb. Mr. Putin said he personally ordered Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shigu to call his foreign counterparts to tell them about the purported plot. He maintained that Russia knows the Ukrainian facilities working on the project. He mocked the allegations by Ukraine and the West that Russia was firing on the territory of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in southern Ukraine as ravings. Russian troops have occupied the plant, Europe's largest, since the early days of the conflict. Mr. Putin also expressed bewilderment about Washington's policy on China, noting that tensions sparked by a recent visit to Taiwan by U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi come amid the U.S.-Russian showdown over Ukraine. Why spoil relations with China at the same time? Mr. Putin said. It seems to defy logic and common sense. It looks like ravings. He hailed Russia's relations with China, but said he had not warned Chinese President Xi Jinping about his intention to send troops into Ukraine when he visited Beijing days before that to attend the 2022 Winter Olympics. Asked about Washington's threat to re-evaluate its relationship with Saudi Arabia over the Riyadh-led OPEC Plus alliance's move to cut oil production, Mr. Putin argued that Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman was acting in his nation's interests and the need to stabilize global energy markets. They need to respect the Crown Prince in Saudi Arabia, and they will respond in kind, Mr. Putin said. And they will also respond in kind if they are spoken to in a boorish manner. We see no need for that. There is no point in that, neither political, nor military the Russian leader said Russia is not the enemy of the West but will continue to oppose the purported diktat of Western neoliberal elites, accusing them of trying to subdue Russia. Their goal is to make Russia more vulnerable and turn it into an instrument for fulfilling their geopolitical tasks, they have failed to achieve it and they will never succeed, Mr. Putin said. Mr. Putin reaffirmed his long-held claim that Russians and Ukrainians are part of a single people and again denigrated Ukraine as an artificial state that received historic Russian lands from communist rulers during the Soviet times. In that context, 
He acknowledged that the fighting in Ukraine effectively amounts to a civil war, although the Kremlin calls its actions in Ukraine a special military operation. Mr. Putin said he thinks, all the time, about the casualties that Russia has suffered in Ukraine, but insisted that NATO's refusal to rule out Ukraine's prospective membership and Kyiv's refusal to adhere to a peace deal for its separatist conflict in the country's east has left Moscow no other choice. He denied underestimating Ukraine's ability to fight back and insisted that his special military operation has proceeded as planned. Mr. Putin also acknowledged the challenges posed by Western sanctions, but argued that Russia has proven resilient to foreign pressure and has become more united. John Kirby, a U.S. National Security Council spokesman, responded to Mr. Putin's speech as it was underway. We don't believe that Mr. Putin's strategic goals have changed here. He doesn't want Ukraine to exist as a sovereign, independent nation-state, Mr. Kirby said. Russian troops pummel Bakhmut as Putin seeks visible gains in Ukraine Russian soldiers are slowly edging closer in their attempt to seize the eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut. Troops are pummeling the city with artillery in an attempt to prize it from Ukrainian hands in order to complete Moscow's goal of capturing the entire Donbass region bordering Russia. While much of the fighting in the last month has unfolded in southern Ukraine's Kherson region, the battle heating up around Bakhmut demonstrates Russian President Vladimir Putin's desire for visible gains following weeks of clear setbacks in Ukraine. Taking Bakhmut would rupture Ukraine's supply lines and open a route for Russian forces to press on toward Kramatorsk and Slovyansk, key Ukrainian strongholds in Donetsk province. Pro-Moscow separatists have controlled part of Donetsk and neighboring Luhansk province since 2014. Before invading Ukraine, Mr. Putin recognized the independence of the rebels' self-proclaimed republics. Last month, he illegally annexed the Donetsk, Luhansk and two other provinces that Russian forces occupied or mostly occupied. Russia has battered Bakhmut with rockets for more than five months. The ground assault accelerated after its troops forced the Ukrainians to withdraw from Luhansk in July. The line of contact is now on the city's outskirts, with mercenaries from the Wagner Group, a shadowy Russian military company, reported to be leading the charge. Russia's prolonged drive for Bakhmut exposes Moscow's craziness, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said in a nightly address to the nation this week. Day after day, for months, they have been driving people there to their deaths concentrating the maximum power of artillery strikes there, Mr. Zelensky said. The shelling killed at least three people between Wednesday and Thursday, according to local authorities. Ukraine's military is firing mortars and heavy artillery to repel the Russian forces who were less than three miles away by early Thursday, according to the Institute for the Study of War, a think tank in Washington. Russia needs a victory in Bakhmut given it losing control over large swaths of the northeastern region of Kharkiv to a Ukrainian counter-offensive last month and its deteriorating position in Kherson. The areas were among the first the Russian military captured after the February 24 invasion of Ukraine. Samuel Romani, an associate fellow at the Royal United Services Institute, a defense and security think tank based in London, said, Russia's suffering defeats across the board. They need the optics of some kind of an offensive victory to assuage critics at home and to show the Russian public that this war is still going to plan. Good day to everyone.